and welcome. Thank you all so much for coming. I know you got busy class schedules. I know this time is precious, and I appreciate it, and, and so does the cast. Thank you for your support. This is part of your education, too. This play was in 1666, first written by Moliere, and it's a beautiful play. He wrote it in rhyming couplets. Now, that means in French, in 1666, this was written in rhyming couplets. It has been adapted by the brilliant David Ives into English in rhyming couplets. Now, raise your hand uh, if you speak two languages. Yeah? OK. Excellent. Very impressive, right? But now imagine trying to rhyme in two different languages, right? To take something that rhymes in one language and put it in another. Cuando escucho a español, para mí esto es fácil. Pero cuando escribo en español, esto es bien difícil. Okay. Muy bien. Gracias. Disculpame mi horrible español, pero es un ejemplo, ¿sí? Right? It's an example of how hard it is. So admire this. Remember this was written in 1666. Remember this rhymed then and rhymes now, and appreciate how hard that would be to do yourself, right? The other thing I want you to appreciate, aside from the history of this play, is how much effort and time these actors put into it. Now, an hour worth of memorization, that's a long time. Can you imagine memorizing an hour's worth of stuff that rhymes and all over the place with acting? They've worked really hard. They've spent hours saying goodbye to their family, you know, saying goodbye to their work, right? Saying goodbye to a lot of things to show you this. So all they ask in return is that you laugh when it's funny, right? Can we practice that once? <laughs> Okay, okay, good. Very convincing, very convincing. All right, you guys all have an acting talent as well. Um, laugh when it's funny, laugh hard and laugh long. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. It will, it will be like waves of love crashing over the stage. If you all laugh, it's like there's a relationship happening. It's like there's love here in this room. So please, feel free to laugh. And then two, please just give them an hour of cell phone free life, okay? Just turn your cell phones off for the hours of time they spent in this place, right? For the hours of work that they put into this show, give them one hour of your life without cell phones, okay? I really love this show, I hope you do too. Can you put your hands together and give a crazy loud BCC welcome, wait, wait for it, for the cast and crew of School for Lies, an adaptation of Moliere's The Misanthrope. Let them hear you. For was with his immortal play which mixed the batter for this morning souffle. In 1666, his entertainment titled The Mrs. Rope, a dark arrangement of human life and love and whole blah blah. But funny too, and I mean funny, ha ha. A masterpiece from Connie's top mess. Too bad for us, he left the play in French. Which no one speaks, except, of course, the French. And Pompey's text, who badly terms like genre. So Moliere, we'll do our own damn version in English. Thank you for your full immersions for those who revel in our native tones. At least those who, hello, turn off your phones. Oh, another sign of how the world has changed. And can you believe back then what dunces ranged in every level of society? Or that wild buffoons actually held great positions of power? <laughs> Thank God we've none of that. No fools to sour our peace. What well, fools, what use of satire? Now our lives are placid. And all our ills solved by techno fix? Let's pity then, poor. 1666. Monsieur, Monsieur! Oh, oh. We are too sweet. And Madame Salimans, I always meet. The most enchanting, most delightful people. A congregation of each other's people. Oh, but you! No, you! Well, yes, it's true. I dazzle Paris. You are a pinnacle! But you! But you, sir, you call me cynical. You are Polaris! Perhaps, but 
Time is short. Our hostess is lost, so we want to talk back court. I'm off to spread my little patch of clover, but I return before the morning's over. Ah, good thing you'll have a chance to meet my new friend. He's late, but has a talent to offend. A friend of yours, monsieur. Call me Priest Smith. A Frenchman born. Frank's been some years in Britain, where he's picked up, I swear it's not a front, a preternatural gift for being blunt. Uh, Why, he's so de 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 determined to be fully candid, his every syllable can be backhanded. A pity it is that. Invincible. Huh. He'll pillory people just on principle. No, I will not. The answer's no, you blank. You frog-faced fuck. You perfumated blank. You cringing idiot. Ha, <laughs> good. That sounds like Frank. Can you believe this lackey stooge, this brat? This doorman wanted me to leave my hat. Frank, there's a gentleman here who's curious. Will you excuse me, please? I'm being furious. As if I'd want to stick around this dump, whose clientele, no doubt, is from the sup pump of all that is trumped up Dull and artificial, where even the artifice is artificial. But what's official is a fishy smell. Fine, take it then. Go hang it up in hell! Although we're total strangers, I can see such high speed for you. I would be grieved if I did not hear instantly extend my offer, nor my plea to call you Frank. What? I know your widow's weeds. Was it a wife? No, I wear black in mourning for your life. Monsieur? Just Frank. But you're still Frank. Alas. Francois, I'll call you. Stuff it up your class. Oh, you really have no permission, do you? Well, to someone sue you, I have influence. If someone sue you, please call me for help. Don't be embarrassed. Who would want to sue me? Sir, they're suing all Paris. It's why I'm here, our hostess, to her sorrow. We'll come to judgment with a case tomorrow. And once my help to let's say, sway the bench, you've met our silly man, a glorious wench, a widow, sir, a beauty and such spirit, a whistle sharp, no suitor, there come near it. Although, God knows we try. Ha-ha. The way she makes us vibe. Ha-ha. Uh -huh. So you'll accept my friendship freely proper. Monsieur, the gift's too great. My friend, your friend of prodigy is deed. This man's a miracle. Sir, you have seen, uh -huh. as prodigy, all other men in Paris. You are a peak, a Himalayan terrace, to which we humble mortals have no claim. You are the Western world's eternal flame. But you. No, you. Your servant, sir? Ah, the same. Who's the jerk? Not a clue. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, good Sander. Leave me. What? I said, leave me. Why? In candor. If you're of his mind, then you're not of my kind. Leave me, or I shall leave. Frank, what's the matter? You truckle to this pompous tit. You flatter. You fall upon him like some long-lost wife. And then, I wonder you don't die of shame. You tell me you don't know this asshole's name? What's your business, don't you then? Keep him with abuse. Or, be proactive. Buy yourself a noose. Politeness hardly warrants self-destruction. Polite? When you two hug, I could hear suction. Seriously, Frank, what would you have me do? Speak from your soul. Say nothing that's not true. And number one among the things that bug me, don't ever, 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 ever hug me. Dear Frank, you're so unique and so eccentric. Eccentric? I? You stencil. I'm authentic. The truest Democrat on this earth's trust. I treat all men with uniform disgust. But why? The ignorant iniquity of man dates back to the antiquity of man. Your ravings won't change humankind. What's the benefit in having underlined men's faults instead of understanding them? Ugh. Forgiving. Ugh. Not reprimanding them. Loving them. Ugh. As Buddha would do. Did Buddha know what Barracuda did? All right. For a selfish, wicked, two-faced mean. Yet I'm no more disgusted of my own species than when I watch caged monkeys throwing feces. <laughs> And if a so-called friend told lies through some, traduced you, started rumors, you wouldn't view that one spawned friend with loathing? Good morning, sir. This man wears women's clothing. Now really? <laughs> he won't tell. He's shy that way. I'm talking total dragster, by the way. It's a little joke on Frank. And here's the chaser. He dresses up as Queen Marie Theresa. Wah well, ha ha! The sateen gear, the silver gown. Wah ha ha! Tits out to here, a diamond crown. Oh, what fun! <laughs> you must be full ass new friend, Francois. Just Frank. How you exude a je ne sais quoi? May we embrace? No, no problem. <laughs> Frank, this is me or us? Who? Ah, oh, don't praise me, you're too kind. At Madame Suleiman's always find such open arms with such ready amity. And I sure hope you don't think it's in vanity, or wouldn't mind out you're such a friend, if I read to a poem that I have penned. Stop, stop! Um, no, you wouldn't want to do that. Not read? Please, friend, so I'll be hard and tell me, should I publish this or let this sink? I must recuse myself, I have this kink. Which is? I'll tell you what I really think. A word which you may notice rhymes with stink. Oh, thank God, some candor in this lying age. Before we met, I knew you were a sage. Oh, please. All right. 
Uh, yes. Just speak your thoughts. Don't pander. Remember, Frank, we have penalties for slander. What would happen if I penalize his rhyme scheme? Ready? Like bystanders at a crime scene. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, me. Song, colon. Formerly the poem of the song, you see. <clears throat> song, colon. Thank you. Is it long? Not very. Good. It's just a simple thing. That's understood. My verses like to sing with ancient fragrances. And a whiff of Homer. I thought I sniffed a primitive aroma. <clears throat> <clears throat> Song, colon, hope. An hour was all I gave it. Sir, if it's shit, then 50 years won't save it. <laughs> Proceed. We know the title. <clears throat> hope. <clears throat> ah, Phyllis. A pseudonym for her. The Amorous like damsel I've indicted the same song to. Why don't you name the dame? Why, it'll be wrong to. You can't address her? Why? Some legal hitch? She uh, doesn't know I love her. So tell the bitch! <laughs> <clears throat> ah, Phyllis. Of course. What idiot doesn't want to thrill us with noodling proof of his poetic shtick? An elegy to my late poodle's dick. I told a poet friend the other day about his so called art. I said, Don't bray your every rippling fart in limping distichs. Taking a poop in public's not artistic. So resemble him then, your futile friend? I didn't say that. <clears throat> Why pick up a pen when every word's an infelicity, a tribute to inauthenticity? A canapé? Give me simplicity, <laughs> not painted brick of rack and some dull dope. Oh, forgive me. You aware? Yes, Colin. Hope. <clears throat> me, me, me. Ah, Phyllis, Phyllis, Phyllis. You're like some strange bacillus. Bacillus? What? Did I misuse the term? How fresh to rhyme one's girlfriend with a germ. Ah, <laughs> uh, Phyllis, Phyllis, Phyllis. You're like some strange bacillus. Do you intend to kill us with gauges that can chill us and make us smoke? Oh, spill us a length of rope and still us fair made with hope. With hope for Phyllis. Oh, Phyllis, Phyllis. 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 The end. It's brilliant! It's so well made! And so sure! For some pain, poetry's the only cure. Applause, the poet's like earthly balm. Not that I learned a compliment. A palm, a puff, some sigh, some kindly word, and some sympathy. No, I abjure all empty empathy. And you're for being ignored for applying the pure. When these are words like brilliant, well made, and sure. You wait least silence tokens? What, Monsieur? I'm thinking uh, Virgil. Virgil did inspire this. But would Virgil link his lady to a virus or segue from this microbe to a rope, straining with feeble rhymes like mope and hope? My friend, you certainly are analytic. I make my living as a drama critic. Well, I maintain this poem's rather good. I'll just say this, Monsieur Conan. You would. Pardon if I don't duplicate your taste. Why, it's a little gem. It's tinsel, paste, it's dull, derivative, pale, pompous, trite. The city's full of fans for what I write. Yes, sycophants who are brown well past their noses. You trust the fecal foul to judge your roses? So you're the end all be all, you're the word? Well, here's a word to think on, colon, turn. <laughs> Indeed, the next time you were home to set, I'd print it on a perfume papier toilette. You'll pay, sir, for a slanderous retort. Fine, utilize the cash to lose that wart. You're his accomplice. I'll see you both in court. Your servant, sir. <laughs> Thank God we're rid of him. Frank, this is serious. No, this is grim. You need a lawyer. Why? It's foolhardy not to hire one. But I'm the injured party. Injured by all his arty verbal sludge. I should sue him. But Frank... Bring on the judge! It's folly, Frank. Can't you for once be wise? God help the man who is in this world's eyes. Well, please behave yourself a silly man. Are you in love with this illustrious hen? I love her cousin. Pure and kind as Eliana. And she loves you. Who knows? I haven't said. So tell her then, I love you. Bang! To bed. As for your hostess, sounds like a coquette, with men on leashes, panting for her twitch. Your silly man sounds like a royal oh, bitch. I've itched to meet you. Struck dumb, apparently. Well, here's Eliant, a glow of goodness for which she's a font. For let you know, Marquise Acoste, who's no one. <laughs> Should you experience any emotion, sir, show one. Philant, will you uncork your minister? His silence is becoming sinister. Tis not my suit of inky black, madame, that can denote all that I mean or am. I have a darker purpose past all showing. Darker than this. So this is 
easygoing. At least my clothes reflect my attitude. Don't widows wear black in the platitude? Some do affect it for custom or for art. I wear my widow's weeds inside my heart. How noble, or what rank in Normandy? You, sir, prescribe me conformity. I like the plain. I'm simple as my sleeve. Use it to wave goodbye, and you can uh, leave. Uh, 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 uh. Ah, so is there gossip? Oh, there is. Fess up. You're jesting. I am not. Philant. Place dresser. No, I do not. He wears a crown. That is a lie, as is the silver gown. That specificity is a mite confusing. Oh, little joke of Frank's are not very amusing. Don't be ashamed. I'll lend you my lame. But tell me, tell me, who will we dish today? Oh, silly man, please stop. It's wicked, cruel. My cousin has the tender heart, the fool. You see, I do impromptu poetry. Shameless. All very innocent, the subject's nameless. So who will it be? What fool? What pander? I ran into Dami. No names, I, no slander. I mean a friend named D. Thank you, Clitander. Take seats, take seats. What kind of pays, Dubois? Monsieur, I guess a cushion's too bourgeois. Good God, congratulate me, kids. I've tamed him. <laughs> Give me the meat. Did I name him? And now, friends, for today's distraction, a portrait of D. I can't watch. Action! If this dummy had something that you wanted, you'd frisk it for him like a practice sloop and get it if you had to pull it too. A canopy? No, thank you. Give me two. <laughs> don't lie. Don't hug him. Don't soft sell him so. A man's a laughing stock? Then tell him so. You are a laughing stock. Oh. <laughs> 